Hello, my name is Leonid Spanner, and I'm here to discuss predicting cervical cancer. This research was originally conducted by myself, Angela Zhang, and Kiran Singh with the University of San Diego Masters of Science in Applied Data Science Predictive Modeling course using the R programming language in conjunction with the Carrot package. It has since been converted to Python using Pandas, Scikit-Learn, and other relevant libraries. The data set was sourced from the UCI Machine Learning Repository and has important predictors that can be evaluated and potentially groundbreaking to the medical field. HPV is one of the most important predictors, but there are others that were considered too. The 858 female patients came from an institution in Venezuela, and this is important because the high death rates from cervical cancer around the world tend to come from third world countries. So there is a lot of room to improve this coverage vis-a-vis -vis machine learning models. The data is subsequently partitioned using an 80-20 train test split ratio to evaluate the model performance of data outside the training set. The class imbalance scenario whereby the majority of cases, healthy, is rebalanced with oversampling. This is but one technique and we can further discuss how other techniques like rebalancing classes within the models themselves can be used at subsequent iterations of this same experiment. Three models are proposed to aid in establishing the likelihood of being diagnosed with cervical cancer. Results vary based on key performance indicators of the receiver operating characteristics, respective areas under their curves. In looking at the age variable of the female patients, we can see from the given five number summary that the mean is larger than the median thereby suggesting a positively skewed distribution. Further, we inspect these age groups to determine which one has the highest um, amount of data in it. And here we can see that females ages 22 to 30, most of the data is attributed to them. Overlaying the biopsy results, there exists a class imbalance problem. Even from a visual standpoint alone, there are more healthy cases than not. This is confirmed by the contingency table, which again shows 803 healthy cases and only 55 cancerous ones. Normalizing the bar graph uncovers that the positive biopsy results have the highest frequency among 51 to 60 year old patients. Pre-processing the data involved the following steps. Missing values were originally cast as question marks throughout the data set at large. Re-encoding them to NANs or not a number uh, was the first step for pandas to recognize columns that were numerical as floats. Furthermore, imputing these missing values with the median was the approach taken to avoid overestimating the behavior of each respective feature. Dropping near zero variance columns from the results obtained by calling the dot var function on the data frame was instrumental in this endeavor. Subsequently, the minority class uh, positive biopsy results was oversampled to reflect the behavior of the majority class, thus addressing class imbalance, as we can see here. This was by no means the ideal or best solution, but one of many. Here, principal component analysis was used as a dimensionality reduction technique to call the first two principal components and fit transform them to the data. The data was then resampled accordingly. However, originally when this uh, research was conducted in R, uh, PCA was used more uh, or less as an exploratory data analysis technique rather than explicitly a pre-processing one. To this end, the following scree plot uh, was generated. The target biopsy results was assigned to its own data frame and the data was split into an 80-20 train test split. However, prior to the split, a baseline logistic regression model was used to test statistical significance. The baseline logistic regression model is used to bridge the gap between exploratory data analysis and predictive analytics. The descriptive form of the model is shown as follows. This breaks down to predicting biopsy results in the following equation. 
age and number of sexual partners are taken into account as the first two variables in the mix. The ensuing summary output table shows that the number of sexual partners, first sexual intercourse, and DXCIN, which is the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia features, all have p-values that are greater than the common alpha of 0 0.05, thereby rendering them not statistically significant, further omitting them from the model and reducing the dimensionality. Now modeling commences using the train and test samples. Uh, results are provided by the classification summary report herein. Um, and whereas it is tempting to rely on accuracy and accuracy alone, it cannot be done in good faith without considering precision, recall, and F1 scores respectively as balanced metrics. So here it is shown that logistic regression has an overall accuracy score of 0.65 and F1 score of 0.59 on the positive class. From scikit-learn, the logistic regression function is called on a specified random state and then fitted on the training data and subsequently predicted on the test data. Hyperparameters are manually tuned on the logistic regression model over a list of different cost values in an attempt to improve the baseline accuracy score. The results show that the optimal test accuracy of 64% is contained within the cost hyperparameters between 0.5 and 0.8. The training and test accuracy are then plotted. Tuning the model manually, as we initially saw, is a lot like flying blind. Uh, what hyperparameters are optimal? Which ones do we choose? For this reason, the model is subsequently cross-validated over a repeated stratified K-fold with 10 splits and three repeats. All solvers are considered, and cost is defined over a log uniform set of random values between 1E negative 5 and 100. Randomized search CV is used, although other methodologies like grid search CV could have also been implemented. And the very best accuracy score is shown to be 64% using an optimal cost of 0 0.08 L1 penalty with a lib linear solver. Next, the random forest classifier is called upon as an additional supervised learning method for this classification task to determine cervical cancer likelihood. Accuracy and F1 scores are improved by over 30%. And finally, support vector machines are called upon to aid in this classification task using the radial basis function kernel. This is where the Euclidean norm of vector x minus x prime squared is the Euclidean distance between the two feature vectors. And gamma equals to 1 over 2 standard deviations squared. Simplifying the equation, we have the following. Increasing the cost at every step penalizes the model, yes, but produces a greater propensity for classification at each iteration. Thus, the highest test accuracy of 87% is achieved where cost equals 50. The F1 score is 9% less than that of the random forest classifier. Granted, however, this is still much better than that of the logistic regression model. The three models can be evaluated in the following manner. For example, let's look at our last model, support vector machines, and take the true positive of 134 in the numerator and false negative of 15. We can add the two in the denominator and carry out the division as follows. So we'll have a uh, recall score of roughly 90%. This is corroborated in the classification summary of the prior table. Recall simply determines how many positive biopsy results were predicted correctly from the positive class. The ROC curves of the three ensuing models are plotted alongside each other, demonstrating that the random forest model, colored in orange, 
captures the highest area under the curve, of roughly 99%. Support vector machines come in for a close second with an AUC of 94%. So all things considered, accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, and AUC, the random forest model is by far the highest performing. Its mean squared error of roughly 4% is the lowest among all three models, thereby reinforcing and solidifying this claim. In 2020, an estimated 604,000 women were diagnosed with cervical cancer globally. Having access to the right medical technologies for these women and modeling techniques for data scientists could help bring these numbers down and ultimately save lives. About 44% of patients are diagnosed in the early stages. Thank you for your time and attention to this very important topic.